Good day everyone, it's Caitlin and today we are talking about how to do double piping for a waistline. Hello and welcome. Let's go ahead and make some piping. So um, if you've not already seen the how to make piping video, you may want to go ahead and watch that real quick. Um, just so you kind of have an idea of what we're doing and the purpose of piping and all that. Because I'm not going to go into any of that in this video as far as the purpose and why we do it and all of that. Um, and from a historical, from a historical standpoint, what we are going to do is just talk about how to make double piping because that's why we're here. If you're doing this for historical purposes, you need to do self fabric piping. Very, very rarely do you see non self fabric piping on extant in the 19th century dresses. Um, all the exceptions I've seen have been, uh, very, very fine dresses out of silk or wool. And the piping was used as a trim detail, not necessarily as, as functional. And I have seen more contrast piping with double piping than I have with regular piping, if that makes sense. Um, but we're going to self fabric today because that is by far the most common. Um, so this is going to be for my wedding dress. And I have a biased edge here. Remember that when we cut piping, it's always on the bias. It's for stretch. And we're going to cut a piece that is two inches wide by however long you need your piping. Plus a few inches. Two inches, so it's definitely wider than normal piping. Oh, I picked the wrong scissors. I have two identical pair of scissors, and one is the uh, sharp hair, and one is the not sharp hair. I have two identical pieces. I have two identical, well, nearly identical pair of scissors, and one is the sharp hair, and one is the not sharp hair. And I apparently did not wrap the sharp hair. All right, this section was not cut straight, so I'm just going to just cut this on a straight grain to give you a nice little uh, pointed edge. And this one is the same thing. So what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and sew this together. So remember with the other piping video, it makes sense to want to sew them like this, but then you get a 90 degree turn. What you want is to do the points opposite. Okay. And you're in a stitch where the point where that meets. So if there's a point. I'm going to stitch straight across to that point. And if you have more pieces, you're going to need to do a lot more sewing. I only have one seam for this particular. All right. So we carried a modern boarding machine to um, do this piping because it's the only machine we have right now with the zipper hook. And of course, if you want to watch the other piping video, you know it's easiest to do this on a zipper foot. Um, we're here doing it by hand. Of course, that's mute. I just don't really have time to be doing this by hand. So. We're going to do this with the modern machine. I'm going to trim these edges just a little bit. You don't have to, but sometimes I like to. What we're going to do is I have my needle all the way over as far as it'll go to this side. And I have my piping cord. Now, remember, if you're doing historical piping, you need to have a very tiny cord. You can see how small this is. It is not anywhere near a yarn size, it's not anywhere near modern piping size. This is the piping cord you need either size um, 8 or size 10 um, of the cotton pearl is the best and um, matches the size of originals. So just like before with the regular pipe, well basically on this first step we're going to make regular piping. So I'm going to fold it over maybe a little over a quarter of an inch. I've not used an embroidery machine in many, many years. So this should be fun. I'm going to cut off the string. And there it is. And I'm going to over. There we go. Okay, I like the little lever. I don't really like the button. Ah! That was like really far. back for the next step. So I have one side of the piping done so it looks like regular piping just a lot longer. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to make basically 
Well, it's double piping, so it urges me to get times two. I got to say, I've been sewing on my 1907 treadle for weeks now, <clears throat> and going from a 1907 treadle to this is a very strange feeling. spectrum. So yeah, we're gonna make basically two things of piping, just one on either side. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is make the double piping part. So we're gonna take these two and we're gonna fold them directly in half, but we're gonna cover that first seam line with the second piping. So you see double piping. And we're going to stitch that together. And you don't technically. Yeah. That's why you need a piece of piping that's several inches longer than what you might need it as. I still have not gotten used to this. stitch directly on that line that you did before the uh, second one and you're putting this other piping directly to cover the first seam basically so this is the part where you kind of need to be careful and make sure everything's even that you're not making the bottom piping larger or smaller than the first piping or the top piping. So when you get all this done, now what you want to do is just go back over it when you're all done and make sure there isn't a part that needs to be redone that you, know, you don't see the double piping as well, that they're like meeting, which is what you don't want. Just make sure the piping looks good before you do the next step. So now what we're going to do is put it on the bodice. So I have the bodice here and I mark on the bodice exactly where I need the piping to go or to start. And so that fi final seam line on the back is that. So what you want to do is when you're putting it on the bodice, you don't, you want to do right side down. So you're doing right sides together. So here's the right side of the bodice and it's matching with the right side of the piping. And so I'm staring at the wrong side of the piping. So yeah, this is, this is not a common technique, like you don't typically see a lot of double piping, but you do on nicer dresses sometimes. So it's just a nice thing to know how to do. And I figured a wedding dress would be, you know, nice enough to, to practice this. So I'm going to cut this about half an inch from the end, fold that in. There we go. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my machine. I'm going to use a, a treadle machine now because that came out. Uh, this time I'm going to use a treadle. And I'm going to stitch directly on that last piping line. So just like in normal piping, I would stitch directly on the, so the seam. I'm going to stitch directly on that second seam. The first seam is for that first piping. The second seam is when we sewed the two pipings together. So I want to sew directly on that line, not anywhere above it and not very much far below it. I really want to hit on that line all the way down and around. And I got a fun little point here to actually try to make cooperate um, and all the way across. And then I'll send you back for the next step. Okay, so now that the piping is sewn on, I am doing an optional step of trimming this down. So not my piping, but the actual bodice. And that is totally optional and you don't necessarily need to do it. I just have some parts where the bodice ended up being a little bit longer than the piping. 
Now the nice thing about double piping is that there's already a finished edge on the piping and we don't have to fold it under. Um, there's already that finished edge. So that is a really nice thing about double piping. So what I'm gonna do now, load it back this way, get some pens. It's basically like normal piping. Flip it over. Whereas um, with normal piping, you'd have to turn this edge under and then fold it. You don't have to do that. I mean, you absolutely can, I guess. It may be kind of bulky down there. I mean, well, for mine, because I have such a very fine, thin silk, but with most fabrics, they make it kind of bulky because you have two layers here that if folding under would make four layers. But, so. And you don't have to, you know, you don't have to, so. It is a finished edge. So we're just going to iron nicely. I'm really making sure that this is, the piping's pulled all the way out. And that it's nice and smooth. And that all the raw edges are covered. Which is one of the reasons I cut down the bodice. And at this point, it's just like regular mid-19th century piping. I just have to whip this edge to the bottom of the bodice. So here we are whipping. So remember, just like with normal piping, you don't want to see the stitch on the very front. So you're not picking up the fashion fabric, like your actual dress fabric. You're picking up the lining. And that way from the front, you don't see it. And this is the last step to making double piping. So it really actually is not as difficult as you might think. It's just literally you're doing two things of piping on each end, squishing them together, and then putting it on like normal. So it isn't entirely anything that's super difficult. Which I know it looks like it's going to be something that's super difficult. And the effect is so nice, though. All right, and there's the double piping when it's finished. I know it's very hard to see on camera, but there is. There's two pieces of piping there, I promise. It is there. Um, I just don't have a strong enough camera where you can really see what's going on. But, yeah, that's double piping. Again, you usually see it at the waistline. Um, more common on silk dresses. I think I've seen exactly... You know, I don't think I have seen any non-silk dresses with double piping. Well, that's why you go back into the notes and see. I can't off the top of my head. I think they're mostly silk, though. As of right now, silk dresses, you can do it on the waistline, especially for, like, fancier dresses. I have seen it in contrast, but very rare. Um, very rare. Not common at all, but um, it happens occasionally. There's one dress in particular I'm thinking of um, that's like floral and there's like a burgundy reddish. Um, she, they used on all the piping. So it's, it's basically the piping is as trim instead of just functional. But that's very rare to find, especially in adult dresses. You do see contrast piping more on kids clothes, but um, for adult stuff, it's very rare. But yeah, I mean, it's a pretty little fact. I'm glad we did it that way. I think it's kind of easier to see on the front. I'm gonna move it around. I don't know if you can see a little bit better there or not. I'm also dealing with the fact that there's lace covering things up, so I'm trying to pin the lace out of the way. But, yeah, a little double piping detail. So, yeah, I mean, I'm quite happy with how that's turned out. And, yeah, hopefully, you learned something if you're. Um, doing a silk dress and want to do a try a double pipe detail. It's a fun little detail at the bottom of the waistline. Um, would suggest maybe the size 8 cotton pearl instead of the size 10. Size 10 is getting a little small for this type of piping. I think mean, you, if you're doing double piping you kind of do need it just a little bit bigger than your average piping. So it was a fun little adventure and um, I think I'll do this on more silk dresses. I've also, since I do a lot of time periods, I have not seen it in the 1830s. All the dresses I have seen it have been 1860 so far. Now I haven't done a total lot of research into it. And I haven't really noticed in the 1830s dresses if it pops up there or not. 
but so far I've only noticed it on some 60s dresses. So, since this is the late 60s, well, my white band was kind of based on, loosely on the late 1860s, then I felt like it's a good detail to add. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed learning about double piping, and I hope you're inspired to try it next time you do a silk dress. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you. Uh, click that little bell notification so you're uploaded. Click that little bell notification so you're notified anytime I upload a new video. And have a fantastic week, and I'll see you back here on Monday.